All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over the new Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Um, so when Google AdWords released this new user interface, one of the things they updated as well was the Keyword Planner. Um, so it was always known as the Google AdWords Keyword Tool forever. Uh, they changed the name to the Keyword Planner and then they changed the user interface as well. Um, so it's changed around a little bit. We have another tutorial on our channel for the old Keyword Planner. Uh, but this one's going to be updated for the new one. So uh, what you want to do to get started is sign into your Google AdWords account. Uh, so take any Gmail account, take any Google account you have if you don't have one already, and just go to adwords.google.com, set up your account, set up billing. Um, the way the Keyword Planner works is they're going to give you more data if you're actually running an active campaign and spending money in Google AdWords. Uh, so it's kind of the benefit you get for spending money in Google AdWords. If you're not spending money, um, what they're going to do is give you ranges of data. It's not going to be as accurate. It's going to be more of an estimate. Um, so what I highly recommend doing, um, if you could see here for this month, I've spent $1 and I'm going to have access to everything in the keyword planner. So if you wanted to set up a campaign, uh, maybe you just want to set up a small campaign to get started and spend a couple, you know, spend a little bit, make sure you have billing all set up in your Google AdWords account. Um, eventually you're going to be able to unlock that data just when you start spending a little bit with a campaign. So uh, something you might want to do to get access to more data. Um, but to find the Google Keyword Planner, what you want to do is up in the top corner here, you want to click on Tools, and under Planning, you're going to see a link for Keyword Planner. So once you click on that, it'll pull the Keyword Planner open, uh, the opening page. Uh, if you can't find this page here, if they change it at all, sometimes they change the interface here. So if, if it changed, if it's not under the Tools menu, just go to Google, just type in Google AdWords Keyword Planner, and it's going to be the top link usually. Uh, so right here, it's ads.google.com slash home slash tools slash keyword hyphen planner. Um, so if you can't find, you know, this through the Google Ads interface, um, then you can just do it, you know, straight through Google. So um, what we're going to do here is go to Find Keywords. Uh, so we want to find new keywords for our business and we're not going to be advertising today or pretending to advertise at least uh, to set up this campaign and for this tutorial is going to be Geico car insurance. So it's every keyword I'm going to pull is going to be related to Geico auto insurance, Geico car insurance, things like that. Um, I'm not going to pull, you know, for motorcycle, all those different things that they cover, um, but just kind of to give you some examples of how to find keywords. So to get started, you can either type in keywords like car insurance and enter that there and just click get started. Um, so that'll pull up, you know, it's gonna pull up. So it pulled 615 keyword ideas here. So there's 615 different keywords that they think are related to car insurance. They're ranked by relevance. Um, so each of these are ranked by how relevant they are to the, you know, to the initial keyword we entered here. It's gonna pull average monthly searches for those keywords. It's gonna pull the competition in AdWords and it's gonna pull some bid ranges. Um, so right here is the low range. Uh, so it's the lowest that advertisers are bidding to get on the first page of search results. And this is the highest that uh, advertisers are bidding. Um, so it's the top of page bid. So basically the highest bid that anybody is bidding on this keyword, um, or at least close to it. Um, if you already have these in your account, you're, you're going to have an ad impression share here. So if you're already bidding on some of these keywords, it'll show you your ad impression share. Um, if you connect your Google Search Console account with your Google Ads account, you can actually see your organic average position for keywords in here. So that can be very useful. Um, so if you're, you know, optimizing for the top keywords in your industry. Um, so for example, for Geico, they probably have an organic average position here. They probably have an ad impression share here. Um, so they can kind of see, okay, we if we want to get a higher ad impression share, we want to make sure we get a higher organic average position. You can track all of that in the Keyword Planner. Um, so just another thing that you can do. Um, so, um, let's just say instead of entering car insurance here, I'm going to start from the top. Let's say instead of entering car insurance here, there's other options you have. So you could also enter a URL. So I have the geico.com slash vehicle insurance page open here. So you take it, copy this link and you come right in here, uh, paste the link and you could either do entire website or this page only. So I'm going to do this page only. And what Google will do is pull keywords directly from that URL. Um, so the keywords are probably all going to be very similar, um, but it might just be a little bit different, you know, in terms of what the relevance is for the page compared to the keyword. Um, so just a couple different options you have there for looking for keywords. You can enter your own website here. You can enter a competitor's website here. Um, you can enter your own keywords there. Uh, so whatever you can do that you think helps you pull the best keywords is what you want to enter there. I usually end up doing at least you know, five to 10 searches with different keywords, different pages, things like that, to try to find as many keywords as possible, especially, you know, if it's, 
if it's a huge industry with a lot of different things that people are typing in. So up at the top here, um, if you want to change locations, you can. So let's just say you want to serve, you know, one state, you can come in here for locations and just put, you know, California, if that's where you serve. So wherever you serve, you can enter the location here. We're going to leave it open to the United States. Um, so language. So if you uh, serve people who speak different languages, things like that, you want to enter different languages here as well. It's going to change the average monthly searches. Um, so the way language works is if you just uh, change it to Spanish, it's going to actually use the data here for people who have Spanish set as their main language in Google. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of people have the main language set as English, but you can have the main language set as Spanish in Google. So if you have it set like that, Google is going to use that data to say, okay, this is how many people who have Spanish set as their primary language in Google, how often they're searching things in Google like this as well. Um, so search networks, I usually just keep it Google. You can do Google and search partners. Um, when I run AdWords campaigns, I do Google and search partners. Um, but when I'm just finding forecasts and things like that, I'd rather just use Google. I think the data is going to be um, a lot more accurate because Google is just going to pull from one source rather than all the different search partners. Um, so I like to just keep this as Google. So going down a little bit, um, what we can start doing is building a plan. Um, so what that means is you can start actually building your campaign just using the keyword planner. Um, so if I click on car insurance here, um, I can click add to plan. I can do add to a new ad group. And I believe in using single keyword ad groups. Um, so I'd like to not have more than, you know, three keywords to one ad group. Uh, and I prefer to have just one keyword in each ad group. So what I would do is do a new ad group, car insurance, for the keyword car insurance, click create. It's going to say adding to car insurance. We're going to add the exact match keyword. Um, I prefer to use exact match. Um, we have a tutorial about uh, keyword uh, keyword matching if uh, you have any questions about that as well. And all we're going to do is click add to plan. So what it's going to do is start building our plan. It's going to show over here account status in plan. Um, the other thing down here is in account. So if you have any of these keywords in your account already, it's going to show up here in account. Um, so I created a car insurance campaign before I did this just kind of to practice. And so some of these keywords are going to show up in my account. So if you're already bidding on them, things like that, it'll show here. Uh, so just another thing that could be helpful while you're building campaigns. Um, so let's just keep adding things. So what I want to do is click on auto insurance. We're going to do add to, and now we want to create a new ad group down here. So we're going to add it to auto insurance, create. And then you have to click on add to plan so that will add that as well and once you have these greens over here you want to make sure you're not you know adding these to your plan multiple times uh, so you come over here to cheap car insurance and something you could do maybe is do cheap car insurance maybe we'll just add cheap auto insurance into the same ad group here um, just to kind of show you you can add two to the same ad group at once uh, so we'll create ad group and we'll do you know cheap car insurance create exact match and we're going to add the plan. So now we add those two there and let's add one more just to, just to show you. So car insurance quotes here. Uh, we're going to create one more ad group. So my general rule of thumb with how many keywords to get started with is I like to do at least 20. Um, so I'm not going to do that here just because it's going to take up way more time. Um, and we're going to click add to plan here for car insurance quotes. Um, but I like to add at least 20 keywords. I usually start with exact match keywords. And like I said before, I prefer single keyword ad groups. Um, so I would actually separate out cheap auto insurance and cheap car insurance. Um, because it's so competitive, uh, having single keyword ad groups allows you to create individual ads for each keyword. And you can make sure that each landing page is as relevant as possible to that keyword. So I can create, you know, a landing page just for cheap car insurance. So I do my, you know, our lowest car insurance quotes possible. So that would be cheap car insurance, things like that. Um, kind of separating it out and organizing is going to help with your quality scores. So that's why I do it. Um, just a lot of different reasons to do that. So um, right here, so you can see something that says exclude adult ideas. So this is your filters bar right here. So if you click on it at all, it's going to say add filter. You can remove exclude adult ideas. We're just going to keep it. It doesn't really make a difference for this keyword. Um, but what you can do is add filter and say, okay, keyword text. And you have to say, okay, the keyword text has to contain car insurance. 
So we click apply. So it's only going to pull keywords now that have car insurance. So compare car insurance, car insurance companies. So this can be very helpful if you're trying to, you know, create separate things for car insurance, for auto insurance, for vehicle insurance, you know, for SUV insurance. Um, so you can just do keyword text contains something specific here. Uh, so we'll get rid of that filter for now. Um, but a lot of different filters you have here. So if you can do exclude keywords in my account. So if something's in your account already, you could just exclude it from this whole entire list. If something's in your plan that you're currently creating, um, you can exclude that there as well. Um, the rest of the filters are pretty self-explanatory. So average monthly searches, you could say, okay, I only want to include keywords that have at least, you know, 1,000 searches. Or I only want to include keywords that have less than, you know, 2,000 searches. So good way to find long tail keywords. Um, we're going to see some different keywords now. So we'll do average under 2,000. So very cheap, multi-car insurance, comparison sites. So just some different options here. So um, the filters can really help you find a lot of different keywords. Uh, it's really going to narrow things down for you. Um, so I like to use filters a lot. One of my main things I like to use is for bids. Um, so sometimes if you're looking for keywords, you might try to find a bid, you know, that's a little bit lower, especially in something like this. So let's just say the top of page bid has to be less than or equal to $10. Let's see if we could find anything. No, oh, I guess I did greater. Okay, so less than or equal to $10. So now it's going to pull up some different things. So insurance companies, Geico quote, classic car insurance, motor insurance. So it's going to pull up some different options here if you change your bid ranges around a little bit. So filters are something fun to play with. Um, usually what you want to do is start with their top keywords that they show you here because these are usually the keywords that are going to be driving the most results. They have the most, you know, monthly searches here. They're, they're the highest competition. Um, so I usually start at the top here with the relevance and then as you start getting down you might want to use some filters. Um, so right here with search volume trends you can actually look at you know what the monthly search volume is. For car insurance it tends to be pretty uh, pretty consistent throughout the year. You see some ups and downs. Um, you know if you're looking at something more seasonal some things spike in November and December for Christmas. Uh, if you're looking for a pool for example that's going to spike during the spring and summer months um, and kind of go go a lot lower during the winter months. So uh, search volume can always be helpful to know, you know, when those keywords are the most popular for, for your specific website, your specific business. Uh, you could also do a breakdown by platforms here. So you can do by mobile, tablet, desktop. Uh, mostly, most things are going to go into mobile these days. Um, breakdown by location. So you can see the top states. Um, if I look at the top regions, um, it's going to pull, you know, some different areas here. You could do top DMA region, so markets, New York, Los Angeles, so pretty self-explanatory. Usually that's kind of just based on uh, population for something across the United States. Um, so once we get here, um, we can just change it back to search volume trends. And let's just say I'm all ready with my plan. I want to start building my campaign here. Um, but first I want to look at some forecasts. So this is where you click on plan overview. So the plan overview will give you a ton of different forecasts for the keywords you're typing in. Um, if you have some conversion metrics, you could actually add those too. So, you know, maybe you're getting phone calls, maybe you're getting form fills, whatever it is. Um, but one of the cool things here is you can click along here and kind of adjust what your max cost per click is. Uh, so let's just say we want to bid around $6. So we change our max CPC by clicking here to $6.05. It's showing that for next month in September, our plan can get 37,000 clicks for $41,000, you know, an average cost per click of $1.10, um, which kind of seems lower than I would expect, um, a click-through rate of 4.8%, uh, over 780,000 impressions most likely, um, and then it's going to kind of show which keywords it's going to come in through. So car insurance, obviously the most popular, car insurance quote is going to be popular. Uh, it's going to show you by devices. Uh, so most things are going to come in mobile. Uh, mobile is going to be 93% about it's saying of our cost. Um, you could click on ad groups. So just kind of separate it and see the different ad groups here that we have. Um, so auto insurance, car insurance, you can adjust cost per clicks for each individual ad group. Um, and kind of get updated forecasts here. Um, and then keywords as well. You can go in and just look at keywords, change cost per click for specific keywords. Um, so a ton of different things you can do here uh, with the plan. Uh, so if you go to plan overview, there's a couple different options to create your actual campaign. Um, you can click download plan here. And what it's going to do is give you a CSV file that you can import into Google. 
Um, you can use the Google AdWords editor. Uh, I like to do a lot of my work in the Google AdWords editor, which is a software. Um, it's a desktop software that you can use. Um, and you can just pull all your campaigns in there. You can import, export campaigns. Um, so if you download your plan here, you can just import it directly into Google Ad. Google AdWords editor, publish your campaign, and it's as simple as that. Um, an even easier way is to come in here and click on create campaign. Um, they're going to recommend a daily budget to you based on your bid. Um, so let's just say maybe I want to lower my bid to get started. Maybe I want to bring it down as low as possible, you know, right where this little spike is. So we'll, we'll keep our bid at $1.32. It's going to show 33,000 clicks next month for $23,000. Cost per click goes down a little bit and we'll do car insurance. It's recommending a $1,000 budget. So basically what that means is based on the bid that I set, a $1,000 budget is gonna get us the most you know, out of our bid. Um, so that's kind of where the search volume says for each daily, you know, for every day, it's gonna be you know, about $1,100 based on that bid that we set. Um, you can set custom here, so maybe we'll just do $50 a day. We'll pretend like we're, uh, keep it a lot lower. Um, so it's going to say, congratulations, your new campaign is almost ready. So all you have to do now is just create some ads. Um, so come in here, create some ads. Um, and as you can see, if we go back to our all campaign screen, um, it's going to show our new campaign here, car insurance, $50 budget, manual CPC. You can go into your settings and adjust things as you wish. Um, but basically, we built everything right in the Google Keyword Planner. The only thing that it doesn't do is create the ads for you. Um, you can go into your settings and adjust, you know, how you want to bid on things, different things like that. Um, change the goal for your campaign. Um, so maybe your goal is leads, you know, some different things like that. So that's pretty much how to use the Google Keyword Planner. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, you know, find keywords for your business. Um, so if we just open it back up here, um, Keyword Planner. So we'll do find keywords. It's going to pull up your history here, so some things we've typed in. Um, let's just say, for example, I want to do PPC advertising. So maybe I'm looking for some content ideas. Maybe I'm looking for, um, you know, keywords that I want to bid on to get new clients. Um, so just some different options here. So if I type in PPC advertising, here are some of the keywords that it pulls for me, um, so that they find that are the most, you know, most relevant to that. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is just come in here. Maybe what you do is you, you click on a bunch of different keywords that are all related, AdWords Manager, PPC ads, paid search, pay-per-click ads. You know, just click download keyword ideas. It's gonna prepare a CSV report for us. Um, and then we're gonna have all of this data right in a CSV report. Um, you know, the average monthly searches, how high the competition is, top of page bids. Um, and you can use you know, the keyword planner really to pull anything. So if you want to use these keywords for search engine optimization, I use it for that. If you want to use it for your next campaign, you can do it for that as well. Um, I would build it like I built the last one and just kind of add things to different ad groups, keep clicking add to plan and continue to build it. Um, when I build a new campaign, you know, it might take 30 minutes to an hour um, to completely go through here, add all the different keywords, add them to all the different ad groups. But it's the quickest way I've found to do everything like that um, and the best way to find all the keywords that people are actually typing in through Google. So um, if you have any questions about the keyword planner, uh, make sure you leave them in the comment section. We're going to be releasing something new. Um, so on our website, if you go to surfsidepbc.com slash ask, um, we're going to have an ask a question section there, and then we're going to create videos to answer your questions. So um, thank you for watching this video today. Uh, I know we haven't been creating videos as much, so make sure you're subscribed, and we're going to have a ton of videos coming out for the rest of the year um, and into 2019. So uh, thanks for all your support, and thanks for watching the video today.